Hi everybody, Top Tip Tuesday here today with some scuba mask tips for you. Let's jump straight in. If you're buying a new mask, then you usually taught the good old sniff test. No strap, hold it onto your face and sniff. If the mask sticks to your face, it fits. Only there is actually a better way. Your new mask might fit with your mouth closed, but we dive with a regulator in our mouth or at least a snorkel, which changes the shape of your top lip. For a sure fit sign, bring a mouthpiece or a snorkel with you when you go to the dive center or when you try your mask on. Pop it in your mouth whilst you're doing that sniff test and you'll know whether it's a good fit or not. If you found a mask that fits you, then the rest of that brand's mask range should fit you too. Not in all cases, but they tend to share a skirt shape, even if the lenses and the frames are different shapes. The bit that actually touches your face is fairly standardized across their entire mask range, and a lot of research and design into the exact shape of that ceiling surface, so they're gonna find one shape that works for them. That way, when it comes to buying another mask, you should be pretty safe sticking with the same brand. If you struggle to find a mask that fits you, some masks come in small, medium, and large skirt sizes to fit different face sizes and shapes. They can even come with different shapes for different face shapes. You can find Asian fit masks that are better for uh, better fit for Asian divers. So if you ever struggle to find a mask that fits you properly, try looking around for masks that come in different sizes and shapes that might fit your face better. Brand new masks need to be prepared straight out of the box. Release agents and other contaminants from the manufacturing process get into microscopic little crevices in the glass and mean it will fog up very quickly. By using a treatment like sea buff toothpaste or in extreme circumstances a cigarette lighter you can actually remove those contaminants but do be very careful sea buff and the toothpastes with granules inside of them to whiten your teeth these can actually damage some lens coatings because they're quite abrasive and cigarette lighters obviously can affect the tempering of the glass and just melt parts of your mask. It's not my favorite method by far. After you've treated your mask, you still have to defog it before every dive. The good old fashioned spit method is a touch dangerous today with communicable diseases everywhere, but it does an okay job. You can find commercial defog sprays and gels, which are pretty darn good, but I like to use a tiny amount of baby shampoo mixed with water. It's surprisingly effective and it's usually no more tears as well, so it won't hurt your eyes. And another note, you don't need to do the outside of your mask lenses. I've seen divers treating the outside of their mask, but what's the point? That's the bit that's actually literally touching the water. Before you dive, cool the mask and your face to the water temperature around you. That will help reduce the chance of fogging. Fogging occurs when the warmth from your face causes the humidity to condense on the colder lens of your mask. If your face is colder, then that will help. Splash some water on your face when you jump into the water to try and cool it down a little bit and that will help prevent fogging. When you're wearing your mask, your mask strap should be a little bit higher than you think on the back of your head. It's there to hold your mask gently against your face, not squish your ears down. If your ears are hurting or during a dive, then it, because of your mask strap, it's folding them over or something, then your mask strap is too low on the back of your head. Feel the back of your head and there's kind of a bony point at the back of your skull. Before it becomes the, uh, the fleshy bit of your neck, the bony bit is where your mask strap should cradle, but no lower than that. If your mask fogs up a little bit during the dive, that's why we practice your partial flood and clear so much in the water. A little fog up in the inside of your mask isn't that bad. Just break the top seal of your mask whilst looking downwards. It'll wash away that fog, then look upwards, blow out through your nose and clear it takes less than a couple of seconds and you can see again. Your mask strap can be too tight. It makes sense that if your mask is leaking to just tighten the mask strap and that is kind of true but only to a certain degree. Your mask should only lightly touch your face. Too tight and it can actually leak more because the extra strain is distorting the shape of the skirt so it won't seal against your face anymore. 
You also look a bit like a raccoon after a dive with that big red circle around your face when your mask is on too tight. If you lose or break one of the retainers on your mask strap that holds that kind of flappy bit down, you can just use an old D-ring. Uh, they're cheaper, they're waterproof, and they do the job just as well. If you have trouble with your eyesight, you have a few different choices. If your prescription is mild, then you might not even need any prescriptive lenses. The magnifying effect of the water can actually be all that you need to help your eyes. If your prescription is a bit more powerful but fairly simple, some masks can actually have their lenses swapped out for completely new or small adhesive lenses fitted inside. But these often only correct the spherical reading on your mask prescription. For more complicated prescriptions, it's best to actually talk to a specialist who can grind a fresh lens to fit into your mask, but they are not cheap. They never are. You may be thinking, oh, well, that's okay. I wear contact lenses. Contact lenses on a dive aren't your best choice. Best case scenario, your mask stays in place for the entire dive. But if your mask does come off during the dive or water gets inside of your mask, your lenses can fall out. So now you can't see or put them back in underwater. And worst case scenario, Scenario, tiny amoeba and other nasties that can actually get underneath your lenses and pitch tent there to do some nasty things against your eye. And in some cases, the ionic balance between the salt water and your eyes can pretty much fuse the lenses to your eyeball so they don't pop off like a normal one. It's, it's best not to use contact lenses. A lot of mask lenses have a coating or a treatment today, but they all do something a little bit different. Some will have a UV coating that actually filters out specific specific wavelengths of light to protect your eyes from damage. Others actually allow more light to pass through the glass by reducing reflections on each surface. Mirrored lenses can help with contrast and again filter out certain wavelengths of light. But if you're teaching, then others can't see your eyes, so it's best to avoid completely mirrored lenses so your students can actually see what you're looking at. Mask skirts are typically black or transparent. Uh, each have their pros and cons, and it's, it's very much a personal preference. Clear skirts let more light in, so some divers find them less claustrophobic, and you can see objects more in your peripheral off to your side. But over time, they do discolor, especially if they're left out in the sun for too long. Black skirts, on the other hand, they do focus your attention, which some divers prefer, and they don't discolor over time. Masks are usually named over how many glass lenses they have. There's no huge difference between the two in my experiences. One isn't necessarily better than the other. Uh, again, it just comes down to personal preference and style. A triple lens mask will have one front lens and two side lenses, one on either side for peripheral vision. Side lenses are good so that you can actually see out to your sides, but they can make your eyes go a little bit funny because that glass lenses are with the water. Mm. If you look in them too much, especially with curved lenses, curved lenses are just the worst because they are literally just becoming magnifying lenses on the side of your mask in the water. So make sure that all of the lenses on your diving mask are completely flat. Masks are usually named framed, frameless, or subframe. Framed masks will have a separate frame that holds each of the components of your mask together. Frameless masks forego this uh, and they bond the silicone skirt directly onto the glass lens. Subframe have a small frame attached to the lens and then the skirt is over molded onto that. Frame masks tend to be a little bit larger but stronger in the long run and you can disassemble most of them. With frameless masks, the buckles for the straps, they attach directly to the skirt, which if you're sort of rough with it, it can wear, but on framed masks, it's often attached to that solid frame, which makes them a bit more restrictive. Okay, so that was top tips. If you have any top tips that you've come across in your diving career, let us know down in the comments below. Thank you for watching everybody, and of course, safe diving.